So far, the year 2020 has been filled with drama about production, reshoots, marketing and fandoms and woke culture and a variety of issues that range as far as the eye can see. We've had three films come out recently with varying degrees of success or failure. And of course, I'm talking about the $7 million Blumhouse thriller The Invisible Man, the controversial reworking of Sonic the Hedgehog to become a decent video game adaptation to film, versus a film that its distributing studio hoped would have done better in the box office, but didn't. And I mean Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. But 2020 is far from over, and we've got a list of films we're looking forward to seeing in theaters. Keep in mind, this is a nerd list from one of the boys at Bounding, so you won't see auteur films that will win Sundance festivals and whatnot. Okay, the coronavirus has really put a kink in the slate for some of these upcoming films. And this video was literally made before all the studios started delaying their release dates. So the movies that are affected will get a little bit of an update with their release date, if applicable. So without further ado, let's get going. My father cannot fight, so I will take his place. There's a lot of controversy about this movie already, what with the coronavirus and a debate about if China is interested in seeing a film from Western media about their culture. Another movie that tried to do this, Crazy Rich Asians. And that one did not do well in the Chinese box offices. And now that most of the Chinese population is on lockdown because of COVID-19, Disney is probably trying to come up with a plan B for China audiences. The film is met with a certain curiosity amongst the fan community. It's advertised more as a war epic and doesn't have all the magic and fanfare and the lack of a talking miniature dragon that were staples of the original film. As a positive, it doesn't have the uncanny valley that ruined the live action experience for Lion King last year or Jungle Book before that. And it seems to have learned the lessons from Aladdin and those other two films for having actors on screen versus CGI animals. So it's a toss up whether it will live up to it or do more than the original animated feature or fall short of what Disney is expecting of it. Note that the release date for this film has been set back to an unspecified time due to the coronavirus pandemic. It was previously going to be out in theaters on March 27th of this year. Disney is still looking for a later date to release it. We've got a number of stories out on Bounding Into Comics about what's happening to the production of Dune. It's being compared to Lord of the Rings, and there's some changes being done to the script compared to the novel, one of them being a gender swap, which caused a bit of stir in the fandom community. Despite this, there is a bit of curiosity for what director Denis Villanueva will bring to the big screen this December. We don't even have a trailer for the film yet, but set photos seem to show a vast world being explored in Dune, and maybe the Lord of the Rings comparison is a fair take on what we could see from the screenplay. Add to this the music of Hans Zimmer and the acting of Jason Momoa and Oscar Isaac. Yeah, we're going to this one. Dune will come out in theaters on December 18th of this year. I went from dying. I feel like more alive than ever. Increased strength and speed. The ability to use echolocation. And an overpowering urge to consume blood. Honestly, the movie about a sometimes villain of Spider-Man played by the worst modern Joker to hit the big screen just doesn't sound appealing. That in addition to the Nightcrawler X2 graphics for some of his special abilities and the atypical transformation to a six-pack chiseled superhero, I digress. It seems to echo a lot of what we've already seen from Venom in terms of tone and feel for the plot of the film. 
something of a dark creature, ends up doing the right thing by his powers and has to fight off some real evil threat that wants to put the larger part of the population in danger. Yeah, I've seen it all before. I'm sort of predicting this movie and my expectations are pretty low because I'm almost 90% certain that it'll play out that way. However, there's this 10% curiosity in me that wants to see if they can surprise me. There's Michael Keaton's character from Spider-Man Homecoming in the film. And you see a poster of Spider-Man plastered on the wall during one of the scenes. So we know Spider-Man exists in this world. What this could mean for the long term of the Marvel universes, both Sony and the Marvel Cinematic Universe owned by Disney, I'm not certain. But this 10% curiosity is going to watch the movie to see what comes of it. Morbius comes out in theaters July 31st. And speaking of Sony, this film had something of a promise with its promotional material in the trailers for the first film. And honestly, it delivered none of those promises when I finally saw it in theaters about two years ago. I was only stirred up with confusion at its rating, its story, and its character. I wasn't a fan of the Woody Allen version of Eddie Brock. I'm sure Tom Hardy can act his ass off, but in this film, it was odd and a bit too much. Michelle Williams didn't contribute much to the story, and the villain was lackluster and his motivations were just as confusion as the big CGI fight at the end of the film. The only bright spot of the film was actually Venom, the creature, and the banter that character would have with Eddie. Oh, and it didn't even care to make a connection to Spider-Man in any way. Even when the origin story in the comics is intimately tied in with Peter Parker, this version just happens to exist despite the established canon. However, it did manage to make over 800 million when it was out. So it managed to get itself a sequel, and now Woody Harrelson is playing Carnage, a character teased at the end of the last film. Plus, the Sony folks can now use a few of the Marvel Spider-Man characters, and there's even word that Spider-Man could make cameos in these films. Then there's a bit more to look forward to in Venom's sequel compared to its first outing. Venom 2 will come out October 2nd. I found this in my living room. Whoa, killer replica. A replica of what? A ghost trap? When the Ghostbusters female squad happened in 2016, it was lambasted in theaters by the fans of the original films. While critics and general audiences did not enjoy the experience, much of what followed after it was less than admirable behavior by the cast and director of the film in response to the fan reactions and there started brewing a mutual disgust for the way hollywood was treating source material fast forward to 2019 and the fans who were left with a sour taste in their mouths from the 2016 film woke up to a new trailer it builds with nostalgia and sent chills up the spine as it hinted of an old-style animation of ghosts and the unveiling of Echo One, the iconic siren in the blast from the Poton Pack. These fans, who were angered by what Hollywood had done to a franchise they held dear, were now crying because a trailer was doing justice to the source material. It honored the past it came from. Now honestly, with all that's going on recently, I totally forgot this one was coming out this year, and it's out on July 10th. This one is a wild card for Marvel and it certainly has the star power to fuel it through some of the criticisms. It's an obscure title that Jack Kirby brought to the Marvel Comics table after his New Gods run over at DC didn't take quite well. The Eternals did okay for the comic book company exploring a larger scale universe compared to what the Fantastic Four Doctor Strange could. It really started digging into the lore of what Marvel could be, a universe filled with celestial beings and timeless entities who embodied aspects of the universe more than just a few stones in a metallic glove could convey. But still not a lot of people could point to a comic of the Eternals and say they've read through some of the titles. 
it might be different for, say, Hulk or Thor or Iron Man or Captain America, as they've had long runs in the comics, and we've all at least read or were familiar with one of the titles, but even I was a bit iffy about this one being announced. But with Kit Harington, Angelina Jolie, Gemma Chan, Kumail Nanjiani, and Richard Madden, I think this film will have a strong enough cast to sell it. At least to me, a comic book and entertainment nerd. I just don't know if that'll be the case for the regular audience. We'll have to see when November 6th rolls around. What's the last thing you remember, Danny? Remember 2017? We saw a trailer for a little film that dared to do something different with a franchise that we had gotten used to in some way. Mutants. When the X-Men first had their time on the big screen, it was to some standard superhero fare. And they set a bar that had been since surpassed by its own franchise and other franchises like DC. However, to switch things up, they dove into materials like Deadpool and Logan and saw that making a familiar title and giving it a twist with another genre was something worth exploring. Josh Boone then wanted to take the mutant concept and apply it in a horror setting. And we all saw the first trailer for the film. It was quite a horror flick, at least in its promise. Then it, a legit horror movie, came out with a ton of praise and box office returns. So Boone was tasked with upping the horror elements of the film with reshoots and edits to deliver on those aspects. Yet the Disney acquisition of Fox had put this film on unsteady grounds. It eventually came to a halt when the acquisition was finalized. The reshoots never happened and the release date kept getting pushed back because of a lackluster box office from another movie in the same vein, Dark Phoenix. Despite this, Disney, after it had acquired Fox, released a new trailer for the New Mutants, albeit with more footage that explored who the kids were and what they could do. And the X-Men and mutant fans were ecstatic, ready to finally see this film that had been delayed for so many years. And then the coronavirus happened. It was supposed to come out on April 3rd, but who knows for sure at this point, folks are saying that this film might actually be cursed. next vin diesel and john cena are rivals in this action-packed over-the-top film i say over the top because that trailer was like something you would see at a superhero flick and this is what fast and furious franchise had become cars and humans dialed up to 11 on the ridiculous scale people are coming back from the dead defying the laws of physics and gravity and just stupid glorious action i was actually very interested in seeing this myself and just Note how utterly bonkers the franchise had become since its humble beginnings as a car racing film. However, despite Vin Diesel's insistence that the film would open as scheduled, the coronavirus concerns and many of the state and local governments thought differently. Many cities and states had recommended large gatherings be put on hold for the time being as such environments might cause further spread of the COVID-19 disease. And so, along with the other two entries on this list, Fast 9, though slated for the release date of March 21st, is now going to be released on April 2nd of next year. I tell people my sister moved out west. You're a science teacher. Your husband... He renovates houses. You're thinking about moving, but you're going to wait until the interest rates go down. That's not my story. (laughs) For some reason, the release date on this Marvel film has not budged, despite two other films on Disney's wheelhouse, New Mutants and Mulan, being moved to another date. 
although unspecified at this point. We're still waiting for an announcement of their new release date. What's clear is that this film is part of their phase four and the fact that they haven't moved the date of its release might mean it's pivotal for the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. Which is crazy to me because this is a film about a character we've already seen die on screen. Natasha Romanoff is dead as of Avengers Endgame. She threw herself off a cliff in Vormir for Hawkeye to obtain the Soul Stone. Even Hulk Snap couldn't bring her back. But this looks like an action-packed film that's long overdue for the Black Widow character. I know Marvel fans have been waiting since Iron Man 2 for the Black Widowed Natasha Romanoff to get her own solo film. I mean, it's more than 10 years later and it's finally happening, I guess. Maybe they felt further delays for the film would be a slap in the face to what some fans have been waiting a decade for. Those of us with ears to the ground have been hesitant about the release date staying put and we're waiting for any updates. Black Widow will be released on April 24th of this year. probably think it has. We all have our struggles. Have you ever been in love? A long, long time ago. You? So many times. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> the sequel to DC's first female-led solo film and the first out the gate for female superheroes to hit the big screen, the highly stylized Wonder Woman 1984 looks to be a blast from the past with nostalgia nods to folks who embrace the fads and culture prevalent in the 1980s. What's interesting about this take is that all of the trailer focuses on a character who has effectively retconned her history as described in Batman v Superman and is an active superhero for a greater part of the century. There are going to be Easter eggs and nods to fans throughout the film, for sure. With the introduction of Cheetah, played by Kristen Wiig, also with Chris Pine, reprising his role as Steve Trevor, who somehow magically reappears despite having sacrificed himself in the first film, which took place in 1918. And the fact that the guy isn't ageless or immortal like Diana. The film also features Pedro Pascal as Max Lord, the villain of the film who gives off a megachurch minister vibe. If all goes well with the current situation, Wonder Woman 1984 will come out in theaters June 5th. Do you agree with our list? Did we leave something out? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the little notification bell to stay up to date with the latest in nerd culture entertainment news from Bounding Into Comics.